Okay, let's do some exchanging of some body mounts on this 87 G-bodied uh, Grand National. This example has about 65,000 miles on it, and it's uh, it's time. It's the right time. I'm putting fillers in it. I'll go into detail about that later, but let's look at the body biscuits. Okay, and this would be the instruction pamphlet. Freeze this if you would like this information. These are the various mounts and how you assemble and match uppers and lowers amid the sleeves and the washer size. Okay, and so we listen to the news here. Sorry to bore you. Here's that position five or the drop in one. See, no bolt. Drop them in the frame and do the squeeze play on them. And the parts list. Got the kit. So, um, I would leave the number three position. There are several, what, two threes? And two, four, and six? What are this arrangement? Twos are behind the front wheels. Fours are midway, just in front of the rear wheels and six and seven are aft behind uh, the rear wheels. So there's that. Again, you want to read this? I mean, I'm, I don't know how you're going to, you know, it's a lot to just freeze it and go slow. If this is of any help to anyone. Okay, and um, working on our 87 Grand National. Um, what I like to do is I slip these fender fender wells fender fender wells out. Long day, and get all this exposed. It's rather easy to do. Anyway, uh, that invites a neat shot of these mounts that we're after. These are in nice shape. These would be the number one position, core support. And as many of the other gentlemen on amid this topic have said, uh, um, there's a factory shouldered washer up there that in the perfect world one would reuse. Uh, I myself got the 4141 Energy Suspension Kit. And uh, we'll see how that looks when it's done. And that gives us a nice way to uh, what I use as a lanolin based uh, oil uh, to, to coat these. Okay, so here's another one sandwiched in here and he'd be the number two. And I've already spun all these out in all 14 positions except the actually 12. Uh, the front core support uh, bushings have a nut and bolt. Uh, the other nuts per se are cage nuts in the welds of the body again which all came out in my example because this is a really clean car so there's the two we'll go after him and again you can see our uh, frame rail and a lot of things that we wouldn't normally see or hear and on the other side things like wiper motor and so on come out um, now would be a good time for example to do all the bearings up on the power master up here and look at her brushes, that kind of thing. Because when there is a failure, it's generally an electric motor failure. And be sure everything's kosher there. Good time to do that. And then our um, position two over here. You can see them. And a lot of that uh, lanolin grease you can see I've got where I didn't access it before and I'm going to now. It's, uh, I can then do that. Anyway, then back to the position one on the driver's side with that same washer that we'll reuse, and we'll see that more later. 
So again, this affords us a, a view of the of the motor and the wiring and um, you know, no billet bullshit control arms or whatever it is. Just put some nice stuff on my control arms and leech it in there filthy and they'll just love life again. You don't need any of that crap all uh, uh you know, I mean my opinion. But you know, if somebody were to give them to me, yeah, it wouldn't suck. <laughs> so uh, we can go after a lot of those, uh, a lot of those bushings, and and we'll better the ride, and then some. I'm gonna put fillers on this example car. I'll take these, uh, take these old ones off where they're starting to sag, and so on. And you know, there's some push pins here for some uh, air baffling, and so on. How to, ch you know, the way these channel the air. So I am going to lace the frame with that uh, with that same stuff, and as we go aft, here's the rear the rear fillers, and those will be replaced by the spool full fillers. And this is already a done deal in here, and really everything aft I've already done, um, undercoating wise, so to speak, and in the ass. And on the back wall, all the lights removed. When you do bumper fillers, you know, it's a given to pop the tail lights. Gee, there's a whole 10 minutes. And, you know, the wiring harness along with it. And then there's a couple of quick spin nuts on the, on the uh, cover and so on for the plate and the fuel door. These would be the position 7 um, pucks, body mounts, whatever you like to call them. They're not looking too great either. And again, we'll we'll go in these horns. There's one way back in there. See him? We're gonna get him out. But I'm gonna just drop this frame, you know, amid removing the column and some other things. Uh, and that way we can separate the the body from the chassis and get in here. Okay. Okay. And a quick review. Um, here would be seven in the ass here, right in front of the bumper horn, and then six. Just told you about five. We can't see him here. There's a, a gusset uh, attached to the frame rail up here that won't allow us to see the number five pocket. But, you know, interestingly enough, the fours, you know, they're here. They don't look too bad either. And if you're going to wick these down with oil, there's holes here where you can do that. And I've done that here. And again, these all came out. And uh, let's see. One. Two, okay, these would be position three. Now look. Now we're getting down to brass tacks. There's nothing there. So in this example, uh, to accomplish our task, this car is just bumping up and down on an iron frame. The puck is gone. And, uh, you know, as we work our way up to the converter, and right up behind the wheel well is what I prefaced in the beginning of this little segment here. And again, here would be the other side, position three. So a good many of these are all the same puck, two-piece puck amid the washers, which raise, you know, your, what, your trim level a little bit, and that's, that's welcome. That'll be nice. But, you know, uh, point being, it's not a big deal. Not a big deal to get in there, and I don't know if I can allow you to see in there or not, to, uh, find out when I do this if that worked. Uh, what we're after. So again, I mean, boy, look at those control arm bushings. They're loving that lanolin and they're filthy with it. Oh man, they're going to glide like butter. And that stuff stays there. That's why I like it. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the hockey pucks. Let's look, let's look at them. Okay, so here would be everything uh, I guess right now, in a preliminary sense of things, in its proper order, I'm pretty sure I got it. All you need to do is look on the instruction pamphlet, and there are basically four different numbers, uh, uppers and lowers, and, and arrange those. So then here would be the core support. Here would be, yeah, that's the one position, and two would be behind the front wheels. Again, as I prefaced in the beginning of this segment, the ones that I just showed you would be the number three position here. The ones just in front of the rear wheels would be here, position four. 
And then five, as I said, doesn't have anything. It's just a drop-in puck. So up in that frame rail is a hole. And he's waiting for it. So you drop that in the hole. And when you lay the body back down, that's, uh, that's going to cushion right up to that. Okay, and then in the ass, six and seven, as I just uh, showed you a moment ago. Um, and then you can again see that uh, there's a washer in the bottom, and then uh, the bushing itself comes apart. There's a pilot in the center for the bolt. And my bolts are fine. Some people have to put bolts in. That's not necessary here. And then a top washer. Would be six. And then seven would be the very extreme just below the tail lights. So very easy to do. Um, you'll have to remove the, well I did, uh, remove the bumpers. Because you can't move the frame rails of the bumpers. You'll ruin the, the bumper fillers. And they're gone anyway on most any G-body example. This, this is a, I hate to say it again and beat it up, a true G-body. Because the early versions of these weren't G's. I mean, I don't, I don't know, everybody gets pissed off. They're A's. They're A cars. Uh, Regals, Regal Estate Wagons, and Buick Centuries were A cars in 1978 when body styles changed. And then in... Late 80, when the 81s came out, why they evolved into G-bodies. They are very, very, very similar, if not exactly the same. I made a good many uh, examples, but look at it. I don't know. I didn't make the rules. Don't give me an A then. <laughs> so I leave that in my comment section. Um, many people have videos about garages and so on, and they haven't got the letter right, you know? And I wonder, well, what's that all about? So, and I... I I guess was with it too until I went to the dealership and they, they said, hey, go get your owner's manual there, Mr. Snappy Tucker. And I went out and ran out and got it and there it is right on the cover. A-Series, Century, Century Estate Wagons and Regals or A-Cars. I, uh, I pretty much shut up after that. So anyway, there's the topic of, uh, of hockey pucks, body biscuits, uh, pucks, plural, whatever you want to call it. And again, all are basically all the same, except the drop-ins and except the core support. They're all pretty much all ducks in a row. There it is. Okay, and of note here, and we're back behind the uh, rear wheels. These would be a, posi a position six bushing in here. Not uh, too easy to see yet until we get them loose and out. And they all, as I said, they're all loosened. Um, but the five position, the Buicks didn't get the five, number five puck. And he's going to sit in the frame rail in a place here that's right about high noon, right on top of the, the frame horn. Um, and he just, lay, he just lays in there. So that's just a squeeze play type of a thought. Um, interesting when you read Dennis Kerbin's books and so on, why... Uh, I, see, I seem to remember that in most examples, Chevrolet and uh, Cutlass um, G-bodies got the position five pucks, we'll call them, and Buick didn't. Very interesting. And then there's a position four down here, and we can't see him. We'll look underneath for that. Okay, back on this 87 example G-body. Um, you can see I've skirted the frame away, and that exposes each landing pad, if you will, or these little welded plates, gussets, whatever we're going to call them, where, uh, where those donuts will seat, and as well on the frame. So you can see that frame all along the rail is quite a bit lower, and the way I do it is just take some extensions. And make some props. Everybody's got a little dimensional lumber around the place, right? Support it in the front. And a hoist is neat, you know, to do this with. And support it in the back. So that way there's quite a bit of room to, uh, to exchange that. Now I'm going to laden that with undercoating up in there. And then I'll go inside the frame with it and then I'll go in the trunk with it. Um, but you can see that that, anyway, the, uh, that's down about eh, five inches. 
So this, just this one side here, this is the mount in the back, and there's no real stress on this, some blocks of wood. Uh, you do one frame and then the other. So I'm doing the right side, and you can kind of see how the car is teetered upward on the right to do that. So you'd, unbut you'd unbutton all the uh, bolts, and there are six of them. Core support being the only one that's nutted topside and not a drop in nut in the rest of the crevices where the other ones go, uh, along with that number five, which is a drop in. And we'll see him in a minute and, you know, go on with it. But we can see again how the frame is very accessible now. All right, let's look at that number five. Okay, and I got this way up in the air, but I guess I'm going to side with Dennis here. I hope that's viewable. Oh, uh, and trying to understand why they didn't put him in. So, if you can see the hole, beautiful. If you can't, sorry, but that's just a drop-in puck. Let's drop him in and we'll see what he looks like. Okay, here again would be the I'm going to turn the screen down so I can see. Here again would be the, the uh, drop-in puck, and we'll find the hole. <clears throat> hole, where are you? Oh, there it is. That's it. And he's going to come right into contact with, uh, with the bottom of the uh, body of the car. Guess what? That is wrong. You're going to take him out here and you're going to move him over to here. That's the position. And that would make sense because that stamped on plate, gusset, part of the body, whatever we want to call it, is, is rather rigid right there. And he'll marry right into that to that drop-in puck. So I'll put it down and that'll, uh, that'll close it on the gap. Again, um, this is what, 78 to 87. 78 to 80s were A-body cars, but our, look at, they might as well be sisters because they're, in this example, I think literally identical to these G-body cars. And uh, I've done the A cars several of them and they don't have this uh, they don't have this puck either we'll call it body mount so don't forget to to do him so that'd be five and then over here would be six and seven six five four three two and then the very course of part would be you got it one okay Okay, and uh, the next step with me is I use this stuff called fluid film. And it's a lanolin based, I think it's non silicon, I don't know. But it looks like caramel to dip a caramel apple. And what I'll do is I'll put this in a spray gun or in a bucket. What about? Chinaman brush here for 59 cents and just laden her filthy in there all along that rail all underneath that body and that stuff dries to what would I would guess I gross as it is would say is ear wax and when water ever hits it it's like water on a duck's back it's forever it kills rust it stops it dead in its tracks and I want that shit filthy in this in the inside the subframe and these little plates. And when I'm all done, I'll give it another enema. So it is just running out filthy. And again, um, now's the time when you want to do that. So look at that frame. He is loving it. Oh look, I mean I'm not gonna powder coat it and um, I'd love to, but I just I don't see the need to do any of that, to do any of that stuff. So when they're uh, when they're down and loose, they're rather limber. These frame rails. 
and you know I got about five six as I said five six inches without a light back here so get that done and uh, there's the there's the resolve you'll have or result or whatever you your word in, in um, exchanging these pucks uh, it isn't a, ma a question or a matter of if it's when none survive drive your car or don't drive it it's all the same in my experience in my opinion okay note to self <clears throat> don't be complacent here pay attention here would be behind the right front tire or position two read your instructions um, because if you're not careful you'll screw it up position three is different than all the others uh, the drop nut has a sleeve washer on it already and you can see them way up there and the arrangements are different so pay particular note just follow the diagram so you can see these are all uh, dropped in here and ready to go let's see if I can get a picture of these back here and he would be six and he would be seven So now we lay the car down on the mounts and torque them down. Okay, let's do that. Okay, and with finality, I guess, end run, so to speak, is, uh, is the outcome amid uh, doing this job. Just running out of there with that wax, that uh, lanolin-based stuff. Loving it. So, you know, I mean a couple of two by fours and um, you can you can do this. I don't know if you can see him. Um, in the whole job, the only thing I'd tell you to watch for is the number five uh, the uh, number three. Number three puck. There's a special in this example, a special shouldered nut dropped into a cage, just like all the other ones, only this one has a shoulder on it. And there everything else is looking ducky. I torqued these down to 30 foot-pounds. I'll go for a ride when it's all done. I'm not sure what the torque value is in the end. It's got to be pretty close. It's pretty tight. And that will have been that. Now I call these pucks. Maybe this is why? <laughs> and here's the end game. And again, these just these just dissolve. But I'm lucky. Uh, I've been life's bitch for years. I do have a lift. It makes it a lot nicer for me. And for you, I hope. Got a buddy? That's the way to do it. After that, some dimensional lumber, a couple of props, a spud. I got a dandy old 1900 job here to pilot those bolts. That baby's a wood handle, all made us out of solid steel. Got that at a garage sale for a nickel. And, you know, line everything all up, bolt it up, torque it down, oops, uh, filth it out with the uh, stuff while you're in there. And, you know, okay, I can spray that. Well, yeah, but not, not, in the, not deep in the bowels like you can with the frame rails out of the way. And that's, uh, that's, that's the appeal to me. So, um... Anyway, that's that's the G body uh, body biscuit exchange. Uh, pay particular note to the number one spot in the core in the core support. Everything up there in this, I think it's a energy four one four one kit. Did I say that? I don't know. Is there? And in the number one example up on the core support, uh, they preface reuse of the factory 
washers on the bottom because there's a lot of threads on that bolt. Perhaps that's why. And then it'll tell you to drive it a while and then put it uh, put it back up and then do a retorque. So not uh, not a hard job. Our side with uh, with the proper equipment. If you're doing it on the ground, it's the same basic premise, I guess, with some bottle jacks and and some careful placement of props on the floor and long horizontal sweeping, you know, two by two by uh, two by eights, two by sixes for a nice, uh, you know, in other words, pick up at a, you know, the whole area instead of a, a focal type of a point, like at the end of a stud, have a have a prop, in other words, on the end of that uh, stud. Easy for you to say. And then you know it's all it's all jacks uh, with with everything else. And you too can can change the the box. Okay, there it is. And uh, I thank you for watching. Please don't forget to rate and comment. Take good care.